Honored Christian Soldiers, song number 612. The band will play the third stanza. Let's all join. you in an activity we are going to stand up and sing one chorus before we continue our congregational service let's all rise tuta imba hosana tuta imba hosana Oh, 
happy now can we continue okay you may have your seats 294 power in the blood shelter in the time of storm. We will do the first stanza and the chorus. Five to eight, a shelter in time of storm.
let's all rise. God in heaven, we want to humble ourselves as we go through the divine service hour. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you take control of the program as we begin until the end. Meet us individually at our point of need and speak to each one of us, for we ask in Jesus' name. Happy Sabbath. We want to welcome you to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. And this is the best place to be at the foot of the cross. The ground is level. We are all sinners in need of a savior. Feel free you are in your father's house. But do not be free to infringe on the rights of others and on the principle of decorum. We expect you while in the church. As well, I know those who stayed at the corner. Kindly, you have come to worship the Lord. Be part of the worship. Do not involve in the things that are not in line with worshiping our Creator and our Redeemer. We urge you to participate in this worship service. And I'm glad that people are coming voluntarily to worship the Lord. This is how I want it myself. It is good to come before the Lord. Hallelujah. So be free and we wish you well. We want to let you know of a very important thing. But let me announce those myself. You know, there are some things that are so important that the chaplain will announce them. Next Sabbath will be a very special Sabbath for three major things that will be happening. Number one, the chaplain will be bringing the Christmas gift someone. If you have to miss, don't, don't plan missing the next Sabbath one. We will be giving our gift of the Christmas. And I hope we know our stand as a church on Christmas. While we know Christ was not born 25th, we don't ignore the occasion. Yes, we don't. We participate in a manner that will let people know the truth. On the same Sabbath, our first elder, who have been their first elder before, we have uh, Mr. John Churcher. We prayed and God answered our prayer. And we will be having a very special child dedication here. We prayed and God answered our prayer. And we will be dedicating that child to the Lord as a response of God's answering a prayer. But the other one that will take place in the afternoon is more spicy. Our friend got married in Congo. Not many of us were able to go there. So the family will uh, have an opportunity to have a potluck and unveiling the new couple at 1.30 p.m. in the, in the graduation square and uh, all faculty and staff are called to come with food. Though, though we will also provide food, but you also come with food. There will be a potluck. 
and few students will be allowed to watch around and see what takes place. <laughs> so that will be a very special occasion. <laughs> and I'm told, I first tell her, Dr. Kasai, where are you? <laughs> Today he looks too young. <laughs> I, I was wondering what is happening, whether you're competing with your son. <laughs> yes, the invitation comes from you and your wife. And please, that will be done coming Sabbath. You see, we have a loaded things for next Sabbath. By the way, last but not least, we will also have the last reading and voting of the new officers. Now we call the church to a business meeting. In the provisions provided for in this church, under the church elections, the nominated committee has been going through proposals that are brought to you. Now today, we go under what is saying, reporting to the church. And I want you to listen to what guidance were given in the church manual. The nominating committee report is presented to the church as a whole and not to the church board. That's why we have come here. Which has powers in the process. The report may be presented at a Sabbath service or especially called business meeting. So this is a church service. It's also a business meeting. Now, when the nominated committee is ready to report, the chairperson, which happens to be the one speaking, should make appropriate remarks to the church. And so we want to tell you that we have tried our very best with the committee to bring you names. This will be the first reading, just to let you see. And we urge you, those of you who their names are being presented, take it with prayer. Take it prayerfully. Pray about it. Thank the Lord that your name can be named. There, is, there are some people who never know what is done. When their names are named, they cause havoc. What they don't know is what that effect can have. So we, wish you, we want to ask you kindly to be able to listen to it. If you have any observations to make, they are made only to the chair of the what? Went committee. Then when we come in the next meeting, if there is an amendment, we will do it and have the final listing. Allow me to invite now the secretary to give us a preview of the nominating list recommendations. At the end of this service, you will find it also pinned in the outside notice board and the board at the chaplain's room. And it is also now, after being released, will be found on a but on TV, you can still see it there. May I call Professor Jackie Obey to briefly bring us the first reading just for information. Professor. Good morning, Church. On behalf of the nominating committee of next year, which is 2024, I'd like to present the following uh, members to serve. Elders, head elder, Loran Kasai, Associate Head Elder Odek Rabach, Assistant Head Elder Ramesh Francis and John Chacha, other elders Paul Wahonya, Paluku Manambio, Moses Chibirango, Cornelius Chumba, Richard Mambo, James Ulu Greer, Chidozi Ibeneme, Evans Odero, Odero, Paul Samuel Francis, Andrew Obundi, Andrews Bundi, Zuko Mafani, Daniel Mate, Nanka Tome, Elvis Waswa, Asga Puran, Walter Orico, Wellington Wambani, Abraham Odiambo Mbori, Amos Asowa, Husband Mokaya, Adrian Kanjala, Robert Okongo, Seth Ruto, Billy Ayeko. Deacons, Head Deacon, Kennedy Wanyonyi, Assistant Head Deacon, Clement Ngabirano, Eric Onkoba, Wilkins Simiti Otieno, Calvins Aguirre, and Don Ochori. Other deacons, 60.
deaconesses, head deaconess, Alice Uma, assistant head deaconesses, Evelyn Mwenambio, Judith Chibirango, Dorcas Marundu, Helen Bano, Anne Katam, Ananisa Omore, Atong Malek, Naomi Chepkuech Kori. Other deaconesses, 53. Church clerks, church clerk, Jackie K. Obe, assistant church clerks, Martha Mambo, Gibson Jacob. Treasurers, church treasurer, Ru Katam, assistant treasurers, Benedict Muthiani, Daudi Munema, Delvin Chepkirui, Lucien Jiriri. Music department, music director, Chidozi Ebeneme. Assistant Music Director, Amy Ogot. Church Choir Director, Justus Ouko. Assistant Choir Director, Travis Obunaka. Church Pianist, Jack Oyango. Assistant Pianist, Milknea Mulungi. Enoch Adegu, Justus Ouko. Other Pianist, 10. Church Choristers, Head Chorister, Justus Ouko. Assistant Head Chorister, Travis Obunaka, Abigail Kawira. Other Choristers, 16. Children's Music Department, Leader, Lorraine Villagomez. Assistant, le assistant leaders are Marty Villagomez, Joy Adegu, Sandra Ondari. Personal Ministries, Leader, Esther Anguenye. Assistant leaders, Eric Smile, Pamela Amba, Timothy Odiambo. Outreach Ministries, Coordinator, Andrew Odwang. Assistant Coordinators, Eric Smile, Treasurer, and, and Donald Munga. Treasurer, Grace Chepchilchil. Secretary, Charlene Birech. Sponsors, six of them. Interest coordinator, James Mutua. Family Life Ministries. Leaders, Paluku and Evelyn Mwanambio. Assistant leaders, Richard and Martha Mambo. Women Ministries. Leader, Edeline Kasai. Assistant leader, Lois Momanyi. Secretary, Stroke Treasurer, Helen Barno. Dorka Society. Leader, Evelyn Rono. Assistant, Grace Mayo. Secretary Treasurer, Ryle Ogechi. Adventist Men Organization. Leader, Job Kimeto. Assistant, Mika Ochola. Treasurer, Stroke Secretary, Arizona Baongoli. Education Sec Secretary, Leader, Catherine Amimo. Assistant, Benson Kinuthia. Health Ministries, Leader, Nova Yakundi. Assistant, Florence Waita Mutua. Stewardship Ministries, Leader Helen Montanji, Assistant John Munene. Communication Committee, Secretary Kevin Yamiaka, Assistant Safari Kikandi Monambio, Ambrose Chege, Tamara Karaoke. All the Visual Ministries, Leader James Ayemba, Assistant Jeff Omondi, Kevin Rono. Publishing Ministries, Coordinator Stephen Sese, Assistant Bodwan Ochieng, Valence Ochieng. Possibilities Ministries, Leader, Monica Simuyu, Assistants, Beatrice Kimori, Ruth Choge. Church Social Committee, Leader, Arizona Mbaongoli, Assistant, Ruth Mitaki, Josephine Yamiaka. Church Florist, Leader, Eric Soy, Assistant Leaders, Petrinita Mwangi, Irene Mwangi, Lauren Villagomez, Dokos Cherotish, Daniel Gesare. Church Building Committee, Leader, Ramesh Francis. Assistant Leader, Eric Soy. Secretary, Elin Chacha. Members, six of them. Sabbath School Superintendents, Leader, Peter Omari. Assistants, Paul Olima, Daudi, Munene, Leze Were, Tony Wekesa Wanyonyi, Ruth Mura Mwene. Sabbath School Secretaries, Leaders, Faith Kemunto. Members, 18 of them. Lower Division, Sabbath School. Leader, Rose Yamuamu. Assistant, Ruth Gerono Bet. Children's Ministry. Leader, Asana Barongo. Assistant, Gibson Jacob, Stella Omari, Arin Mwangi, Charity Odiambo, Jean Ayemba. Teens, 14 to 16 years of age. Leader, Huda Amenia. Assistant, Robert Okongo, Lorraine Villagomez. Juniors, 11 to 12 years. Leader, Evelyn Adegu. Assistant, John Kizito, Mercy Cherub. Primary, two, nine to 10 years. Leader, Susan Gibson. Assistant, Joyce Chumba, Rosalind Yamwamu. Primary, one, six to eight years. 
Leader, Ruth Chumba, Assistants, Sandra Ondari, Aaron Mwangi. Kindergarten, four to six years. Leader, Ol Olivent Oyango, Assistants, Jacqueline Kirui, Pudni Maramasami. Cradle Road, two. Leader, Jean Ayemba, Assistant, Ruth Chumba. Eileen Chacha, Helen Magut, Esther Njagi. Vacation Bible School, Leader, Evelyn Adegu, Assistant, Jean Ayemba. Adventist Youth Society, AYS. Leader, Ian Ijari, Assistant, Steve Makunde, Naomi Baraka. Sponsors, Ruka Katam, Cornelius Chumba, Martha Mambo. Ambassadors, Director, Mika Ochola. Deputy Director for Boys, Brian Monari for Girls. Marion Allende, Church Treasurer, um, Treasurer Secretary, Luis Odiambo. Cradle Role Leader, Purity on Koba. Pathfinder Club Director, Sigrana Segren Obey. Deputy Director, Evelyn Adegu. Assistant for Girls, Ruth Mora. For Boys, John Kizito. Secretary Treasurer, Annalisa Omori. Avent Adventurers Club Director, Irene Mwangi. Assistant for boys, Bon Dennis Oguang. For girls, Juliet Obaga. Treasurer, Pascal Oduando. Eager Beaver, leader, Margaret Asuke. Assistant, Helen Magut. Master Guide, leader, Zuko Mafani. Assistant, James Zulu Greer. Secretary Treasurer, Ru Katan. Member, Walter Orico. Sponsors, Jackie Obe, Martha Mambo, Judy Chibirango. Camp Meeting Committee, Chairperson Moses Chibirango, Secretary Lydia Webuye, Members Six. Church board members comprise of the following all church elders, all church clerks, all church treasurers, all department heads. Church pastor is the board chair, and the church clerk becomes the board secretary. Thank you very much. Thank you for that information. We will be found uh, on our notice board. We'll also post it in uh, wherever you can assist, found it. If you have any discussions or anything that you want to make observations, please see us. Or if you want to volunteer, like we always need deacons and deaconesses, you can still come and volunteer. We will take note of it when we bring the second reading. Thank you very much. God bless you. Happy Sabbath. You are already given official warm welcome from our chaplain. Let me acknowledge one, Luke Riek uh, Tamata from South Sudan. Look where you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I want to also acknowledge the presence of the in service students. May you um, be extending a warm welcome to you. Uh, as you join uh, from this past week, uh, your studies, we wish you a happy and prosperous stay. And very importantly, is you are requested that you can join in church services. Please express your interest to serve, including the choir. That Masai choir, I'm sure, is still around. Thank you. Uh, today's sundown service begins 6. You are requested to be settled at least 10 minutes early. Now, uh, before we do the, the welcoming song and the opening song combined, allow me to acknowledge those who have been serving today. We appreciate the deaconry, the AV. We appreciate Sister Abigail Kawira, the song leader this Sabbath. We appreciate our pianist and the band. Now, with me here, I have Dr. Duncan Mumbo, the university chaplain and the church pastor. Uh, he already brought us a business meeting. He'll be leading the pastoral prayer. Now, uh, we have Sister Deborah Mora, who will be bringing us the offertory reading. Then we have Sister Pam Rolex, who will be bringing the scripture reading. Now, we'll be blessed with a singing a musical item by the outreach ministries just before our speaker gets to the podium. And the very speaker is none other than Pastor Alex Malai. 
you know him right from the academic corridors of this university is not new to you may you pray for him even for yourself as we receive today's message speaking is elder chumba now we are all rising we'll do the welcome song and the opening song hymn number 526 thank you
it is good to come before the Lord. We've been having burdens. The best place to take them, to roll them, is to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because burdens are lifted at Calvary. Now we have come, worshippers who have come. If there's any one of us who have any need for special prayer, as we sing the song, you can come in front. Thank you. with me in the pulpit will kneel and those who have a space if you can have a chance to kneel it's okay if it is not it's still okay for you to stand <laughs> loving father we have come to your house where we can bring all our needs and our problems to you because you are our burden bearer. You have said it in your word, come to me, all who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We have come. Take our burdens away. Take our fears away. Heal those that must be healed. Forgive those that have gone away wide. Restore all broken relationships. Above all, Father, as we come before you, accept our prayers. We commit this university into your hand, even as we go through exams, that, Lord, you will prepare our students, our staff, to do it in a manner that will give you honor and glory. Lord, even as we plan to end this semester, we still want to ask you to walk with us. This university is called by your name. Sustain it. We commit the administration led by Professor Mayo into your hand. We pray for all church officers. We pray for all faculty and students and staff that Lord will keep us together. But above all, Father, today, as your servant, Pastor Alex Malai, brings your word, touch his lips, touch his brain cells, let, him, let us hear him. Not him talking, but you through him. Use him as an instrument in your hand. As the choir will be singing, as we all participate in this worship, be present in this place of worship. Lord, we also remember our country, Kenya. There are floods. There are hard times. Our faith looks to you only. We pray for the government that is in place. That, Lord, you will give them wisdom to guide this country aright. We pray that you will bring peace and stability in our country. Finally, we pray that you come quickly, that you may go home. Come, Lord Jesus. Help us be faithful until you come. We pray in the mighty name of our Savior and our friend, Jesus Christ. Amen.
the Lord bless you and keep you. Happy Sabbath. Okay. God has blessed us and it is time to respond back to God by giving back to him. Tight is 10% of your income and is our sign of obedience to God. Will you obey God today? Offering L10% plus of your income and is a sign of God, love for God. Will you express your love today? God offering are many and varied. In this church, we emphasize the offering the following. Combined offering of which 50% is retained to support BUC church budget. Please give your offering as generous as you give your tithes and even more. Tithe is obedience to God. Offering, offering is our love to God. Will you obey God and lo love God today? You, are, you may transfer your tithe and offering to the church in Fesa, baby number 821078. Remember to indicate your name and the purpose of giving. E.g. tithe, offering, come meeting and ETC. May the deaconess, deacons and deaconesses of the congregation. As the, at this point, we call the BOC band as they give us an item.
the sites and offering in the storehouse of God. Let's all rise. For the gift of offering that you have given unto us, O oh God, as is going out to work, I pray that you may bless us, bless each and every one, O oh God, that your will be done in our lives. For this is our prayer by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Our scripture reading from today comes from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 18, verse 29 to 32. 2 Samuel, chapter 18, verse 29 to 32. I will read in your hearing. The king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahimaaz answered, when Job sent the king's servant and me your servant, I saw a great tumult, but I did not know what it was about. And the king said, turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. 31. Just then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, there is good news, my lord, the king, for the lord has avenged you this day, of all those who arose against you. And the king said to the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom safe? So the Cushite answered, my, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who arise against you to do harm be like that young man. May the scripture be blessed. Jeshi la Bwana libita nilinapambana kwa bidimno napiga vita kwa ujasiri la songa mbele majeshi ya Mungu yana ujasiri nguvu zatoka kwa Mungu mtangulize Yesu jemedari mkuu Jeshi la Bwana libita nilinapambana kwa bidimno Napiga vita kwa ujasiri la songa mbele majeshi ya Mungu yana ujasiri nguvu zatoka kwa Mungu mtangulize Yesu jemedari mkuu msimamo wako mwanadamu uwe ni imara kwa kweli vita sio rahisi ukadara kwa hakika vita vya kiro Imani yako kwa Yesu kisha songa mbele na Yesu mfalme Msimamo wako mwanadamu uwe ni imara kwa kweli vita sio rahisi ukadharau kwa hakika vita vya kiro vinahitaji imani yako kwa Yesu kisha songa mbele na Yesu Mwisho wa vita ni ushindi umepiga vita vya manu taji la kungoja ushindi ushindi wa hakika tazama mingu ina furaha wendo umeumaliza taji lipo tayari kufika washindi mwisho wa vita ni ushindi umepiga vita vya manu 
la kungoja ushindi ushindi wa hakika tazama mbingu inafurahia mwendo umeumaliza taji liko tayari kupika washindi msimamo wako mwanadamu uwe ni imara kwa kweli bila sio rahisi Imani yako kwa Yesu kisha songa mbele na Yesu mfalme Msimamo wako mwanadamu uwe ni imara kwa kweli bitasia rahisi Ukadharau kwa hakika vita vya kiro vinahitaji imani yako kwa Yesu kisha songa mbele na Yesu mfalme Msimamo wako mwanadamu uwe ni imara kwa kweli vita sio rahisi Ukadharau kwa hakika vita vya kiro vinahitaji imani yako kwa Yesu kisha songa mbele na Yesu mfalme Mamo wako mwanadamu uwe ni imara kwa kweli vita sio rahisi ukadharau kwa hakika vita vya kiro vinahitaji imani yako kwa Yesu kisha songa mbele na Yesu mfalme What do you say to the choir? Amen. We thank the Lord for giving us an opportunity to be able to go through the semester. As we come to the close of it, we want to look back and say it is so good that the Lord was with us. One thing that I have discovered in life is that some of the hardest questions and the hardest battles in life are those that take place within families, either between the spouses or between parents and children or between siblings. While we may wish that that should not be the case, but the reality of the truth is that that is how it is. That even as we sit here, some of us are struggling with those battles in life. Recently I had an opportunity and a privilege to officiate in a very unique funeral ceremony it was unique in the sense that it was a funeral of a fourth year law student and it was unique because she had died from a mysterious disease under mysterious circumstances and all the mourners were talking in low tones. 
And when you move near them, they keep quiet. Now this girl came from a very poor family. But when she joined the university to undertake a degree in law, parents and everybody everywhere, the neighborhood, felt that at last there is a glimmer of hope for this poor family. They did what they did. They sold the land, collected funds, making sure that at least she finishes school so that she can bring something to the poor family. Because everybody knew that she was the hope for the family but she lived never to be. And everybody was asking, why? I remember we were the last people to view the body for burial with the parents. And as we were moving closer to the coffin, I vividly remember this once from the mother. She said, Honey, if you had listened to me, you would have not died and left us embarrassed like this. The fire you lead now has been extinguished and we might never live to see the light again but hope to see you that beautiful morning. Such was true in biblical times as well. This reality comes to us in an ancient example that we read in the Bible where we see a longing and a concerned father awaiting a word about the battle in the progress. And this is what brings me to the text that I want to share with you this morning. The text, the verses that were read to us, Second Samuel 18. 29 to 32. And it reads, And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimas answered, When Job sent the king's servant, and me, thy servant, I saw a great tumult. But I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside and stand there. And he turned aside and stood still. And behold, Cushi came. And Cushi said, Tidings, my lord the king. For the Lord has avenged thee this day, all of them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Cushi, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushi answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hard, be as that young man is. Brothers and sisters, this was a question of concern raised by a concerned father regarding the fate and the welfare of a rebellious son. With everything that is happening around us today, 
from the lips of the parents, guardians and the leadership of institutions, the big life and the death question is, is the young man safe? Is he safe physically? Health-wise, are they safe? Socially, is the position is their position in life a good one? Do they choose their companions wisely? Are they undertaking their studies seriously? Brothers and sisters, the answer will not be long in forthcoming. And that is why I have entitled my sermon, Is the Young Man Safe? This is a gender question. If we would ask, is the young man, is the young lady safe? Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, you appointed it long before the foundation of the world that today as we climax the semester, that Father God, you will visit with each one of us. You will give us hope. You will give us stamina to end the semester on a high note. And Father God, you are promised that where two or three are gathered, you are in their midst. I do believe that you are here with us today. Consecrate me and set me aside for this important exercise. Heavenly Father, speak to your children, for I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Is the young man safe? Ask the person sitting next to you, are you sure you are safe? Let me give you a little historical background about the story. The rebellion that begins in Samuel chapter 15 and continues through chapter 16 and 17 is finally put down in chapter 18. What was the problem? What we learn in this story is that after Amnon had committed incest with Tamar, her stepsister, her brother Absalom avenged the deed by killing his half-brother, as you read in 2 Samuel chapter 13. And as a result of that act, Absalom fled to Keshur, where he lived in exile for three years. And during this time, people were concerned because Absalom could not see eye to eye with the father, King David. And Joab being the commander of the army, from now and then he talked to David. Please, king, allow your son to come home. He talked to him. He told him, let your son return. He has been away for a long time. And the word of God says, finally, he convinced the king and the king said, if you want him to come home, let him return to his own house. But one thing I want you to know, I will not talk to him. I don't want to see him. And so Joab went back and told the young man, the king, has allowed you to come home. 
And so he came home. He stayed for another two years without meeting the father. And he continued pestering Joab. You told me to come home. I have not been able to meet this old man. Why can't you allow? And because he listens to you, please talk to him. I want to meet him. And of course, Joab was cautious. He knew the heart of the king and the mistake that the young man had done. And so he was cautious. When Absalom realized that things were not coming, he wanted to hasten the negotiation with Joab. And, and so he applied pressure to an extent of setting fire to Joab's party fields. Now, that message was a message enough which got Joab acting. And Joab went and talked to the king. He said, King, for the last five years, you have not talked to your son. Yes, you allowed him to come home. He came two years ago. But you have not had an opportunity to be able to talk to him. And he's anxious. He's wondering, have you forgiven him? Or why did you allow him to come home? And so he told the king, I want to bring the young man. And, and, and finally, like any other parent, the king said, so he wants to talk to me. Fine. Bring him. And as you read the story, the reunion opened the door for Absalom to move about freely and a plan for the revolt against his father, the king. And the story says that the, repo, the revolt was so serious that the king was terrified. The king was terrified. When you read chapter 15 from verse 14, that he was so terrified to an extent that he gathered all his followers to run away from Jerusalem to the outskirts. He says in verse 14, Arise and let us flee. Or we shall not escape from Absalom. Make haste to depart. Lest the, he overtakes us suddenly and bring disaster upon us. And strike the city with the edge of the sword. And so they ran away to the outskirts of the city. And when the son Absalom realized that the father was running away, he started chasing him. He chased him, and the word of God says, the commanders of the army could not take it lightly. Joab said, after all, I'm the one who has negotiated for this gentleman to come back home. But now, it's like he wants to chase us away. And therefore, the story says, the battle ensued. But one thing that I want to bring to your attention is that when they realized now there is going to be a full-fledged war, the king called his commanders. There were three of them. Joab, 
Apishai and Itai. He said, I know we want to fight this war. I know our destiny depends on whether we are going to win the war or whether the young man is going to win the war. But he said this words. As a father, he told the three commanders, please, as you go out to war with Absalom, deal gently for my sake with the young man. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains orders concerning Absalom. And the war ensued. And the word of God says it was widespread all over Israel. And people were killed. When Absalom realized that the things were not as easy as he thought they were, he started running away. And as he was running away, on a mule, the Bible says that his head was caught in between an oak tree, and he was left hanging. The army, the people who are around there, still remembered the words of the king. As you go out, deal gently with the young man. And so they could not touch him. However, they ran and told Joab, We have seen Absalom hanging in the oak tree. And Joab asked, and you left him? And you never did anything to that horrible man? So he rushed, and the word of God says, he threw three darts into the body of Absalom. And the ten men who were around him also did the same. And they took the body from the oak tree, put it into a great pit in the woods, and laid a great heap of stones upon it, as you read in Samuel, Second Samuel 18, from verse 17. The king was at home. And even as the war was progressing, the word of God says he was not concerned whether he would win the war or whether the son, Absalom, was going to win the war. And so he was anxiously waiting. In fact, the word of God says that he stayed at the gate. And then one day, the bodyguard saw somebody running. And they came and told him, it is like the war is over. And the king asked, how is it? They said, we have seen somebody like Ahimas running. And the king said, if it is Ahimas, then he must be carrying good news. And so Ahimas arrived. And the question from the lip of the king was, is the young man safe? Seemingly, you know sometimes we rush to deliver messages which we don't know the content. Seemingly, Ahimas did not even know whether Absalom is dead or whether he's not dead. 
And so when the king asks, is the young man safe? He said, I did not see properly. I, I'm not sure exactly, but why was he running? Hello? Many times we run without messages at all. And so the king said, if you don't have any message, just stand aside. And the bodyguard came again and said, we have seen another one. He runs like a kush. And the king said, that one also might be bringing good news. And finally, he arrived. And the king asked the same, same question. Is the young man, Absalom, safe? Brothers and sisters, this is something that we need to think about. Obviously, the answer to David is twice asked the one question is something that you and I need to think about. But before we go to answering the question if the young man is safe, or not. First of all, I want us to consider what was King David's mistakes. And what are the mistakes that parents and leaders make in regard to their children. The word of God says that King David had not only sinned with Perisheba, Uriah's wife, but also planned Uriah to be killed to conceal the mistake that he had committed. As it is always is, the word of God says there are consequences to the sins that we commit as recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 12. After he committed the sin by sleeping with Perisheba, Uriah's wife, and calling Uriah to come back home from the war. The word of God says that he wanted Uriah to go back to, to the house and sleep with the wife because Perisheba was pregnant at that time. And, and so the, the God was displeased and he sent the prophet Nathan to talk to David. And he went there with a parable. He said there were two people, one rich man and a poor one. Now this poor man had just one lamb of sheep. But the rich man had many. But he went and snatched the one single sheep that this poor man had, and that triggered an anger in David. And he said, surely as I live, that man should be put to death. And the prophet said, that man is you. You are that man. That says the Lord, God of Israel. I anointed you a king over Israel and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. And I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would also have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of God? To do evil in his sight. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife. And have killed. You have killed him with the sword of the people of Amnon. That was the message. And, 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 and therefore, as you read on, the prophet delivered the judgment of God 
against David. And he said that because of what you have done, the sword will not leave your house. And therefore, the prophet set in motion the tragic events that led to the event that we are sharing today. Are you listening to me, God's people? Let me tell you something. That there is a pecking lesson here for every parent listening to me today. Fellow parents, I want to let you know that our children's lives are going to be helped or hurt by the things we do and the kind of lifestyle that we live. As parents, we determine what happens to our children in the future, either to be successful or not to be successful. As leaders, we are responsible to the people that the Lord has put under our care, either for their success or for their destruction. Are you listening to me? Yes. I want you to note that part of the wrongs of, and the mistakes King David committed contributed to the untimely death of his son, Absalom. How have we contributed to our children's failures in one way or the other? I want to let parents in the house to know that the way your children, the way my children are, is determined by the way we have lived our lives. That is what we learn from this story. Number two, what were Absalom's friends' mistakes? How did they contribute to Absalom's failure? I want you to note God's children that without followers and friends, Absalom would not, have to, would not have been a leader. His friends and followers were a stumbling block to him. Without them, he would not have done all that he did. They were there to urge him and incite him to go on. And this is why I want you to note fat parts of the same feathers do what? Flock together. I want young people you to understand the word of God says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Are you listening to me? And therefore I always tell people my students, you came to this compound alone, you will live alone. Live alone the people who excite you, who are around you, who will tell you, jump up and you jump, sit down and you sit. The time will come when you will face the judgment alone. And that is why parents should be concerned as to the type of people their sons and daughters associate with. The influence of friends is very strong. Peer pressure is very strong. And I want you to note that your children may be in more danger than the way you think. And that is why Absalom's friends contributed immensely to his untimely death, thinking that he was going to succeed. But what were his mistakes? I want you to note that it is always easy to blame others for our own failures. But not all the blame can be laid on others. Absalom did not have to be the way he was. He was the way he was by his own choice. His attitude was 
I am going to live the way I want. My trace, my choice. Have you listened to those statements? The attitude that Absalom had, and that is the way he died. We can blame others for the way we are, we are and the way in which we live. But we are the way we are because we have chosen to be like that. Or because we did not try to choose another man of life. And therefore, Absalom chose to live that way. And that is the way that he died. Let me take you back to the question that we began with. Is the young man safe? Let me now put it the other way around. Are you safe? Is the young man and the young woman in UEAB safe? Ask the person sitting next to you, are you sure you are safe? When the question is put to both young and old, is the young man safe? For this world and the world to come. I want you God's children to listen to the dilemma and the cry of the young man and the woman in the world. The question that people are asking, how can the young man be saved? When 700 people are dying daily on our roads in this country, how can the young man be saved? How can the young man be saved? When they are facing peer pressure to live, to have sex, use drugs, smoke or use alcohol, and even bully others, how can they be saved? How can the young man be saved with the impact of the social media that exposes them to cyberbullying, slut shaming, and pornography? How can they be saved? How can the young man be saved? with family problems, family violence, where most marriages are ending up in divorce. How can the young man be safe? How can the young man be safe with the high rate of unemployment opportunities in this country and around the world? How can they be safe? How can the young man be safe with high rates of unintentional injury and homicide among the young people? I want you to note that the young man is not safe. How can the young man be safe with the high cost of education and training opportunities brought about by the, the new financial model that has made it impossible for our children to access education? Our young people are not safe. Are you listening to me, God's people? How can the young man be safe? That is the question that we need to ask ourselves. How can the young man be saved? I read a story of a young man who used to attend church services in the neighborhood. After church services were over, he would stop by the bar and get drunk. After a while, he went to the pastor and confessed and said, I don't want to drink, but how can I stop? And the preacher asked him why he always hooked his horse when he came to church. He replied, to the hooking post on the other side of the road next to the bar. The preacher said, if you want to stop, Drinking, change your hooking post. Brothers and sisters, many of us may need to change the hooking post. Many of us may need to change the kind of people that we associate with. Many of us may need to change the attitude that we have developed in our lives. We need to change the hooking post. Tell your friend, Maybe you need to change the hooking post. Yes, 
The young man is not safe if he's living in rebellion. Are you living in rebellion to your parents? If that is the case, then I want you to note that you are not safe. Are you living in rebellion to yourself? If that is the case, I want you to note, then you are not safe. Are you living in rebellion to your institution, to your community? If that is the case, I want to tell you this morning that you are not safe. Are you living in rebellion with the church and the policies of the church? If that is the case, then you are not safe. Brothers and sisters, I want you to note that you need to be safe in this life and the life to come. So when we, when we sit well with the young man, brothers and sisters, the young man is safe when living a life of watchfulness and prayer. The young man is safe when they, they sense the perils which they are exposed to. They are safe when they guard against temptation and ever employing divine protection and guidance from God. Are you listening to me, God's people? Ernest Hemingway tells a story of a Spanish father who decided to reconcile with his son who had run away to Madrid after misunderstanding. They quarreled with the father several times and the young man got annoyed and he moved to the city. He stayed in the city for five years. And the mother called the husband and said, Our son has not been talking to us. He has been away for five years. And the father asked, How will we get in touch with him? And the mother said, Maybe you need to make an advert. You need to make an advert in the papers. And, and so the old man, being remorseful for his part in the dispute, he placed a news advert in the Daily Nation. And the advert read, Paco, meet me at Hotel Mondana noon Tuesday. All is forgiven, Papa. And he put the advert in the newspaper. On that very Tuesday, the old man went to the Garden Square in Hotel Montana. Now, when I was reading the story, Paco is a common name in Spain. Like, um, what is the common name in Kalenji? Kibuto? What is the common name in Luya, Wanjala, Wafula? What is the common name in Luo? Omondi. So Paco, Paco was a common name in Spain. And so the father arrives at the hotel square and finds 800 young men called Paco waiting for their father to forgive them. Eight hundred. In one story alone, eight hundred relationships needed forgiveness. And this only included individuals named who? Paco. Reading the Madrid Daily Nation. Is the young man safe? Ask the friend sitting next to you, is the young man safe? Brothers and sisters, I want you to watch out the kind of life that you are living. Watch out the groups that you associate with. Watch out the kind of books that you read. Watch out the movies that you watch. 
in your rooms. Are you listening to me? Watch out the way you handle your parents. Watch out the way you deal with your children. Watch out. Are you listening to me, God's people? Is the young man safe? Is the young man safe? As I mentioned, it all depends on how we are dealing with our people. It all depends, the leaders who are here, how we are dealing with the students that have been put under our care. It all depends the kind of lifestyle, the kind of character that they see in us. And that is why you need to watch out. Tell your friend, watch out my brother. Watch out my sister. As I conclude, I want to give an opportunity to the parents who are in our, in, in our midst. I want to give you a chance as a parent and I want to give you a chance as leaders who are here today who wish to make a new spiritual commitment to Jesus Christ and I make amends to the mistakes they have made either knowingly or unknowingly to their children. I want to give you an opportunity. I want you to reflect as a parent. Have you been doing right? Are there things in your life that you need to change? And so today, I want you to come up front. We want to pray with you. Parents in the church today, I want to give you an opportunity to come up front so that we can pray together. For the sake of our children, for the sake of the kind of lifestyle that we have lived, many of us have lived a life that has a lot of pretense. And so today, we want to pray with you that God can forgive us. That we cannot allow our children to die while they are still young, like Absalom. Come forward, please. We want to pray together. We want to pray together. That is why David was concerned. David was concerned that the destiny of the son was uppermost in his life. It didn't matter whether the war was going to be won or whether he was going to be defeated. The issue was was the young man safe? As parents come, I will ask the chaplain to pray with the parents. I want to give the young people an opportunity. You know the kind of life that you have lived. You know the kind of lifestyle that you have lived. You know the kind of people that you have been working with. You know the kind of books that you have been reading, the kind of music that you have been listening to. And today, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you an opportunity that you may turn out different from the way Absalom turned out. So that you are ready when Christ comes, you will be among the number. There are young people in the house who say, God, we don't want to repeat the same mistake. If you are there, 
Just come. Join with the parents. Join with the parents. The young people in our midst. Join with the parents. Join with the parents. I will ask Pastor Suku and come. They are going to pray for the young people. I want to pray for the young people. Pastor. Father, we thank you for the message. Loud and clear. Touching to the bone marrow. As parents, we have come in front confessing our sins. Forgive us. Lord, we pray that you not only keep us safe, but keep our children safe. Lord, we pray that you will allow us to reconcile to you and to one another. That the life we live will be a life that will give your name, horn and glory and save our children. And save where we work. Lord, we pray that as parents, we pray that you save this university. If there are mistakes we have done as leaders, we confess them all to you, Father. Forgive us and restore unto us your spirit. Let our life, Lord, reflect what you'd want to be seen in your life. All the parents that have come here, we all included, come before you looking for mercy and love. Restore our children. Forgive ourselves. May we be safe only under your wings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Gracious, loving Master who is in heaven. O oh Lord, we humble ourselves before your throne of grace as young people in this institution. Lord, this morning you have spoken to us about Absalom. But Lord, as we listen to the narrative of Absalom, we realize that it is not only Absalom who went against his parents' wishes. Lord, we recognize that we ourselves as young people in this generation are similar to Absalom. Oh Lord, we pray before your throne of grace at this moment that, Lord, forgive us where we have gone wrong. Lord, forgive us for the things we have looked at with our eyes. Forgive us for the things we have listened to with our ears. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, for the words that we have uttered in disobedience. Heavenly Lord, we claim at this moment the blood of Jesus, that, Lord, you may cleanse us and wash us clean. Oh, Heavenly Lord, after this prayer is uttered, I pray in the name of Jesus that where we need to make amends and reconciliation, give us the strength, dear Jesus, to do that which is right. Forgive us, Lord, and wash us clean. Bless our parents, Heavenly Father. Bless this university and bless this institution. Oh, Lord, we long that when you come the second time, that our parents, ourselves, we will meet you as a family. We pray for your unity. We pray for your love. We pray for your mercy. We pray for your forgiveness. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's get back to our seats kindly. And let's get back to our seats. <clears throat> we 
now that we are about to end this service, we want to remind you, most of us who have come today have come because they have come to worship. And I'm glad because of that one. So as we come to the end of this service, there will be the normal song. And after that one, we will sit down and allow the deacons to ask us out in style so that we don't crowd going out. The time is within the range that we allow. And we want to thank you how the week towards the end is going on. We want to thank you, Pastor Alex Malai. We used to work with you. Uh, today, I'm glad I was able to listen to you speak to us. We are grateful. The only mistake you did, which is forgiven, is that you came without your dear wife. And that one, most of us are longing to see her. Of course, you know, I know her. So next time we give an appointment, kindly bring her along. How many people are grateful for our pastor? He's an ordained minister, and uh, the hands that were laid on you were not laid in waste. We have been blessed. How many people have been blessed like me? Ah, I pray that will change. The message was right. The donation was right. Illustrations were excellent. And the mood was good. I pray that the Lord will help us. Next Sabbath, as we come towards the close, very much close, we'll be having our Christmas gift. You dare not miss that one. Vanities. All is vanity, says the preacher. We want to thank you. Now we will call the choristers to come. We will sing the song, and after the song, uh, you make a brief prayer, we'll then be seated, and then we'll be allowed to go out in style. God bless you, and let's continue praying for ourselves. Let's all rise. Father and our God in heaven, we just want to say thank you for speaking to each one of us. Help us to correct where we need correction and accept us the way we are as we prepare for eternity. Dismiss us with your blessings. For we ask in Jesus' name.